Hello and welcome to more nerdy rodent geekery. Do you know what is more fun than talking to a chatbot? Being able to exchange images with one. Obviously we're going to do this all for free on your local PC, so let's get started. First up, you're going to need two things installed already, up and running. The automatic 1111 web interface for stable diffusion, running in API mode is the very first thing you'll need, and you'll also need this text generation web interface as well for the text generation. Now, the next thing I did was to download so many models for text and image generation that my hard drive said no. This is, of course, an optional step, and you may not wish to devote your entire existence to this one task, uh, like I did. Some reasonable text generation models include Bloom, that's quite a good one, Pythia 6.9, Cerebras GPT 2.7 is also very good. Those are all nice open models, assuming I can actually pronounce any of the names. Some of them which aren't so open, which are also quite good, Llama and the Facebook OPT. If you've got a very small graphics card, then the OPT 1.3B there from Facebook seems to work quite well. I managed to get that one running along with Stable Diffusion, so both of those at the same time, and I was only using about 9 gigs of VRAM. Now that you've got both of those running, what you need is that special little link which ties them together. The very bonding of text and image. Yes, it's my really badly modified version of the SD API Pictures extension which comes along with a Stable Diffusion prompt bot as well that I've lovingly crafted and now gift to all you lovely nerds for a grand total of free. The link to my GitHub page with these two files is located in the very secret video description. So pop down there and have a look for that. All you need to do is copy those into your text generation web interface so that you have the SD API bot extension in the extensions directory and the stable bot character in your characters directory directory. I will leave you to pick your own image for the bot and I trust you will choose very well. As you can see, this bot basically just provides some context to your chat sessions, so you don't need any special fine-tuned prompt models or anything like that. This will essentially work on any language model. I wouldn't try using something like Galactica, though. You need something which can do a little bit of chatting. Maybe one day I'll go through that training tab we have at the top now. Do let me know down in the comments if anyone is interested in that. But for now, let's get to starting both of these engines first. I tend to start the text generation web interface first and then stable diffusion. Just watch out as these both do use the same port ranges, so starting at 7860. You can enable the bot extension when you launch or via the interface mode that lists all of the available extensions. Right then, let's get this bot going. So down the bottom here, I just expand all these various arrows you can see all the particular options that we've got. The first one there is the SD API bot. You want to activate the API integration so that it makes pictures and set it to whatever the address is there. As mentioned, mine is running on 7861, so just increasing that by one. You've got some generation parameters there if you want to put in a prompt prefix, if you want your own one in there, absolutely fine, stick it in there. Negative prompt, again, you can set your own negative prompt and image dimensions there. I'm just going to leave at the default 512. I've got a number of different bots. Obviously, I've been playing with this for quite a while now, but the one that I'm giving to you for free is the best one here, Stable Bot 3. Now, when I click on that, it'll come up here, and you should, if you're really lucky, get a picture. That's because I've got a history of it. So if I just clear that and confirm, we'll start off there, and we'll give it a, a fairly basic prompt. Let's get rid of that one and say, show me a cat. Now, it's, it's going to think about it, and it's not going to give you a picture back, but to start off with, it will give you some text. So how do we turn that text into a prompt? Well, go down here, and if you press the Force the Next Response to be a picture button, you just have to click that once, and then click Regenerate. Instead, you'll get a picture of a cat. Alrighty, everything is working. Obviously, the images generated will depend on which Stable Diffusion model you're using. You can change that via the Stable Diffusion web interface only at the moment. 
not in here. Right, let's put this bot through its paces and I'll start off with some noob level chat, then move to intermediate level and finally some advanced level human AI interfacing. Right, so down here at noob level, we're going to think like a stable diffusion prompt engineer, which as everybody knows is a very prestigious job. So let's start off with a really simple prompt. We'll copy and paste this over here because I have prompts ready like that. There, could you generate a stable diffusion prompt for a photograph of a really evil kitten? And the answer is, yes, it can. There it is. It's given me an evil kitten, a black and white photograph print with sharp teeth and a malicious grin and all that sort of stuff. So as you can see, the prompt is quite descriptive about the sort of thing that it wants to generate. Again, it's up to your stable diffusion model to interpret the words. If you want to change the bot in any way at all, it's very easy. Just go and change the text in there and you can add your own flares and styles and however you want the prompt to come out. So if you've got specific stable diffusion models, no problem. You'll just have to change the bot a little bit to use the specific words for your model. All right, let's see if we can do something slightly different. We'll have a, an anime art style cybernetic barbarian. There he is, a cybernetic barbarian, apparently in an anime art style. He does look a, a little bit like that, muscular, fierce, and all that other stuff. So it makes some really nice pictures. All right, so you could use this in all sorts of normal ways, couldn't you, like you do with stable diffusion. So how about a design for a new men's t-shirt? There we go, We've got a men's t-shirt, cool, modern, sleek, subtle, and stylish. That's quite a good t-shirt design. I'd buy that myself, I think. Or you could design a new piece of jewellery. Let's see what this comes up with. There, a lovingly handcrafted pendant. That looks quite nice. All right, let's just do one more at noob level. Something fairly standard. What if I wanted a sunset in the style of a particular painter? There you go, you've got a sunset inspired by the particular painter with all the various attributes assigned to their style. I think that looks quite cool. Hopefully you get the idea. Ask for a thing and the image will be generated for you. Some extra descriptive words will be added onto your basic design and that often results in some fairly pleasing images. Now we enter the intermediate level and stop thinking like a prompt engineer. We're using language models here, which means we can do some quite interesting things, such as treat it like a sort of choose your own adventure book. I'm old, so maybe you don't remember them, but I do, so I'm going to pretend I'm in one now. There, I'm in a room with three exits. Can you describe the room? Yes, it can. There, it's a large room which is dimly lit with wooden floorboards. Interesting. Those seem quite... What, what, what if I examine the floor? Do you, what, what do you think? Let's, let's put that in. Okay, there we go. Copy, paste. If I examine the floor, what do you think I would see? Oh, it's a cracked floor, uneven with age-old secrets and... A, oh, there's a hidden compartment and some loose boards. You know what I'm going to do now, don't you? Yes, let's examine that hidden compartment. We all want to know what's in there, don't we? Oh, okay. There's a little box with all sorts of secret documents, maps and treasures in there. Out of all of those, I'm going to examine that mysterious trinket. It's got strange markings and some sort of enigmatic design and a countdown to deadly consequences. <gasps> I think this object could be cursed, and so it could go on. Obviously, there won't be a storyline as such, but you could carry on exploring whatever fictional world you care to imagine with this infinite adventure. Okay, so now it's time for, mate, my mind has just actually totally been blown level. Some of the smaller language models will likely give interesting results at this stage, but if you've got a fairly general model with a few billion parameters or so, it should do okay. Just to sort of carry on with the theme of games, you can probe whatever language model you're using for the interesting things it may know. For example, you could do a sort of guessing game. Let's ask this AI to pick something at random and then describe it to us. While we won't necessarily know for sure what the answer is in all cases, it's pretty amazing that you can even do this at all. Let's try this prompt here. How would you describe a random scene from the book Wind in the Willows as a stable diffusion prompt? 
Okay, so there's the particular scene. Whether or not it actually relates to any passages in the book, not too sure, but maybe you know the book quite well and can guess. It's a scene, Toad Hall, there's pandemonium, wild animals, eccentric characters, and they are having a bit of a party. All right, let's try another one. This time we'll do, how would you summarise Shakespeare's Macbeth as a stable diffusion prompt? Yes, we're taking the entire book, summarising it, and turning it into a prompt. And as you can see, it's actually taken the word summary quite literally there and put it into the prompt, but never mind. But tragedy, witchcraft, prophecy, power struggle, all that sort of stuff. As you can see, it's, it's done quite well. But we've also got some other things up our sleeve as well. We can always press the regenerate button. Again, it's down to your particular stable diffusion model. But if you don't like a particular picture, just hit regenerate and you'll get a new one. There we go, I think that's done well. We've sort of got a book and some curtains so you know it's a play and all that sort of thing. Yeah, very nice prompt. All right, let's get back to the gaming and this time I'm going to pick a random scene from any 1960s movie and they're going to try and describe it but without using the movie title in the prompt. Do you think you'll be able to guess which movie this is? So there's a beachside bonfire, some young lovers, stars twinkling overhead and waves crashing nearby, barefoot dancing and carefree laughter, timeless memories. Yeah, I've no idea. It says it's a coming of age story. So pick a coming of age story from the 1960s with that scene in it and you've probably got the right answer. All right, so I think you get the idea as to just exactly how imaginative you can be in some of these cases. But as we're still in the advanced section, let's kick it up a notch and enable the send pictures extension as well. Yes, interface mode, SD, oh no, the other one, send pictures, there we go, apply and restart, and then we'll be able to send this bot some pictures. All right, so when it restarts, you'll just have to go back and select your stable bot again. That's all right, it's still enabled, and it will remember where you've gone from. But what we've got now is this send pictures option down the bottom. Let's do exactly that. We'll drag a picture of someone with a beard there and see what happens. And there we go, it's taken that picture of a man with a beard, turned the picture into text and then interpreted that text as a prompt. So we've got a man with a beard standing beside another man with a beard for some reason, and they're both having a great time at the barber shop. So it's sort of taken the whole beard aspect and run with it quite a lot. All right, let's give it another picture. The most obvious picture, of course, is one of a rodent. Let's see what happens there. And there we go, we've got a small white and grey mouse, not quite right, but nevertheless, it is the same sort of thing as the picture. We've got a, a rodent going on. Isn't that amazing? And if you're looking for more information on how to get this text generation web interface up and running, then look no further than this next video.